So in this video today, what I want to talk about is going about making a passenger jet uh, from scratch, pretty much. Uh, if you go back and watch my videos about uh, the main parts of your plane, the nose, the wing interface with the fuselage and your tail section, uh, that'll give you a very uh, good grasp of the basics. Um, but I wanted to go and talk about a few other things uh, about how you can uh, make uh, your design a lot easier. Uh, so the first things that you see is a bunch of sketch, uh, sketches in this uh, model, uh, which is fairly normal for any real uh, airplane. Um, but one that you might be wondering about is this one right here, uh, especially this part right there. Uh, what I did here uh, is give myself an angle and a straight line to follow out when I went to place my wingtips uh, and my airfoil sections in the middle. Uh, some people try to put a lot of detail in and do maybe 20 different airfoil sections which the real model would have but this is only a model of the real airplane and you don't really need to go into that much detail to get a very good looking wing. Uh, one of the things you want to pay attention to is your angle front and back uh, so you're not going in front and you're not going behind too far you want to stay pretty close to the, your sweep angle and the other thing is how your wingtip ends out here and one thing that you can see it looks a little funny uh, is that this part right here is almost perpendicular coming straight out and that's if you look at this model that's actually what you'll find and what that allows is for this wingtip here to look a little bit more natural and slender so when you go ahead and make this wing the other thing you want to pay attention to is the height of your airfoils now for this model uh, it's, a, it's just a straight wing uh, but if you were doing something like the Airbus A380, the double-decker, full double-decker plane, uh, its wings actually start low and then arc up and then flatten out. So that would be something to pay attention to in dealing with the heights of your airfoils here. Um, and just getting a good uh, reference here f so you can make the math a little bit easier is get a ratio going. Uh, in this model, um, the distance between the center line in this first section is about a third of the entire wing. It's a rough approximate. So if this is one foot off the uh, horizontal here, well this would need to be three feet then. Just uh, an easy scale uh, that you can use. So uh, with this interface, uh, here, um, obviously I don't have a round going right along this edge right there. Uh, this is a fairly, this was made on a little bit older uh, computer so it didn't ha handle the graphics quite as nicely. Uh, one thing you'll see here with the wing uh, is that it is very, very level. Uh, if you go and look at a real airplane, compared to the fuselage, the wing is actually canted up about Oh, maybe three or more degrees, which probably between three and five is what you'll see, and that's called the angle of attack. And what that allows you to do uh, is get more lift out of your wing without needing a thicker airfoil, which would leave you with more drag. Um, but you don't want that angle of attack going out all the way along the wing, because it would create some weird loads out here that might threaten to snap your wing off in some turbulence. Uh, so what you will see is the angle attack coming down to zero or just below zero at the wingtip where zero is completely horizontal, positive is angles going up clockwise and negative would be angles going down counterclockwise. So this intermediate section here um, will help you uh, with the, tor the turning of the angle of attack in the wing, so this would be a little bit more neutral. Um, I'd put it somewhere 
a skosh less than in there and have most of the torquing done out here. Uh, what that allows you to do in your wing is have a high lift surface in here where it's stronger and there's more surface area and it gives you more lift. Uh, the other thing you'll see here is the engine placement. Uh, I went with a very very easy engine placement and that's right on this middle airfoil here. Um, and one thing you'll notice is that almost the entirety of these engines are in front of the wing and if you look on most modern jets you'll see that. On older jets uh, the engines will be almost underneath the wing and eventually I guess they found that it is better to have the engines in front. Uh, with the larger and larger engines what that allows you to do is have the same uh, landing gear length but have a larger diameter and thus more powerful engine uh, with the same general airframe. Uh, another thing that I want to talk about real quick is the tail here. Um, and just like how I have this sketch here to, for reference uh, with getting the front edge straight, you also want to try to get this trailing edge of your tail straight. Uh, you can see that's fairly close. I spent a lot of time working on that. It's a little bit off, but that's okay. And you'll see that I have a base here coming out from a larger airfoil uh, that is hidden within the body of this airplane. And what I've seen some people do uh, to make a very, very nice uh, transition here is to use a variable section sweep. I have not had the opportunity to play around with that too often. Uh, and I recommend playing around with it because it does give you a little bit uh, smoother transition rather than this little this is a little bit choppy so that smoother transition you'll see in some of the more modern jets uh, but in this model the Boeing 777 uh, you will see that sort of transition from the larger airfoil to the smaller tail section so if you have any other questions about general airplane modeling uh, go ahead and ask away in the comment section below uh, if you have any questions about the engines or the wings or the tail, don't hesitate to ask. I'll be willing to answer any questions you have. Good luck modeling. Have a good time with that.